Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. This is going to be the quick edit. Today, what we're looking at is a photo that I took at Mount Denali. Uh, there's a little river that runs through there. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the photo filter to help make this photo look a little bit better. Now, this is not the greatest image in the world. However, it is the image that I have, and I think it'll serve very well for what I am going to show with the photo filter. So let's go ahead and jump over to the effects module. And I'm gonna start with the default filter. Now, when I turn it on, you see that it turns the entire photo blue. And that's primarily because, well, that's just the default settings and that's okay, right? Because we have all of these presets up here, uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at what each one of these settings does and how fast we can get a pretty decent look. Uh, if you have a much better photo than me, then it'll definitely be better. So the very first thing here is obviously opacity and then you have uh, your presets that you can use, but then you have the filter type. This is going to give you solid, graduated, bicolor, or center. Solid is going to cover the entire image. Graduated is going to cover a portion of the image, top, bottom, left, right, that's that sort of stuff. It's like a, it's a graduated filter. Bicolor is going to give you almost a gradient between two different colors. All right, so on one half of the photo, you'll be uh, one color and it gives you these options so you can choose what you got here. So color one, color two, but we're not going to worry about that. And then you also have center and this is just going to apply or remove from the center, depending on how you want to work that. All right. Uh, and you can change that down here. So right here, I have it on center. You can see that the blue, and I'll just crank this up so it's really easy to see, the blue is in the middle or it's on the edges, whichever one you choose down here, and then you can mess around with your transition uh, to make it more of a actual hard circle, or maybe you want to make it a blur, which that doesn't look any different than solid. All right. Now, what you can do with this is very, very cool. I use this a lot. Uh, in my color grading of an image, essentially. So what you can do is click here, choose whatever color you want. I typically move towards these warmer colors. And look at that. I already have a much better look than I started with. So if I turn this off, it's really blue. It's overexposed. I did use AI Auto. But when I turn this on, it turns into more of a warm toned image. And I have some pretty good control here. So let's go into these controls. Uh, I can control the amount of how much I add of that color into the image, right? And I will tell you that this is where you really gain some, some flexibility uh, because you can come down here and you can desaturate. And now you have like this sepia toned looking image and this is a really cool way of getting some uh, color effects in your image now i wouldn't recommend doing it that way but you can right now i can also bring up the saturation and as you can see that's giving me a different look as well uh, one that doesn't look too bad uh, when you mix in this orange looking color the next thing is a polarizer now I actually have a filter up here or a preset up here that I'm using uh, to demonstrate the polarizer. But this is actually pretty cool because what it does is it helps it sim or it tries to mimic what you would get with a polarizing filter on a lens. And that's essentially what this entire filter is trying to do is mimic the uh, a physical piece of glass or plastic, if you will that goes in front of your lens at the time that you're taking the photo. Now, there are circular polarizers that you can buy for your camera, and there's also like the little rectangle polarizers. Moral of the story, what a polarizer does is it takes bright areas and makes them a little bit more uh, contrasty and punchy. And that's probably not the best way of explaining it, 
but it also takes away glare off of water uh, and it can make things that are a little hazy more clear. All right. Uh, now, a polarizer is not like some magic piece of glass that you can put on your image and it's or on your camera and it's just going to fix everything. Uh, but notice that it also makes things darker overall on the entire image. Now, I'm going to zoom in right here. And I just want you to take a look at what's happening in this area as I pull up on the polarizer. You see how it's just adding in that micro contrast? That's what a polarizer really helps with. It makes your images a little bit more punchy. And that's why this filter is really cool. This is actually one of the reasons you would grab this filter if you want to throw in a little bit of punch at the same time that you are uh, dealing with a certain thing. Now, the your own creativity is what limits you with this particular filter because you also have a mask and if you wanted to you can put it on the luminosity and you can adjust this to your heart's content however you want i don't know what i'm doing i'm just making this work the way that i want but if i show you the mask you can see i'm not applying it to this darker area right it's only going to brighter areas it's all in the sky so when I come back and I go to my polarizer, I'm going to really impact that sky, but this area is safe. And if I don't want it anywhere else down here, then like normal, you can just erase it. Now, I think the filter itself was actually helping that area, but you get the point, right? That's all I wanted to show you with this particular one. And then the last piece, I'm sorry, I do have one more piece that I want to show you. The last piece down here is the mode. Clean shadows is going to give you exactly that. And let me just reset this because I don't like the way that it's set right now. So uh, clean shadows is going to give you exactly that cleaner shadows. Clean highlights is going to make the highlights more clean but it's going to apply it everywhere else. And your highlights, think of this as like the purity uh, sliders, but they're set to maximum, all right? Uh, and then subtle is obviously going to be very subtle with the way that it blends with the shadows, the highlights, the midtones. And then strong is going to be just this very aggressive, punchy tone. Now, of course, you can always use your opacity slider to dial that down. Your photo is going to need whatever it's going to need. Okay. So we'll go ahead and turn this one off. Now, one of the other features that you can do, or one of the other creative things that you can do with this particular filter is called a neutral density filter. Now, this is essentially sunglasses for your photos all right or for your lens but we're again mimicking what you would normally do when you're out in the field photographing we're doing it in software so there are some limitations of how well it works but very simply put it's taking a black fill layer and it is letting you blend the opacity of that black layer into your image and that's your sunglasses. All right. So you're going to ask me, well, what's the difference between doing it over here or going to local and turning on a or taking a paint with color, making it completely black like so, painting it over the entire image. Right. That's my mask. It's painted over the entire image and then just using the opacity to adjust what what I want. And the simple answer is you could absolutely do this. There's no problem with you doing it this way. And in fact, if you wanted to, you can even come down to classic, crank this up a little bit more, and then you can adjust your exposure. Uh, and you know, you just get options over here. Uh, and then you can also do replace color, all that good stuff. But today we're focusing on the photo filter. 
you can achieve a similar result. The only reason that I would recommend you jump over to the photo filter if you are adding the neutral density uh, filter is because you have access to the polarizer at the same time that you're blending all of this in, but you also get to blend this twice, right? So if I pull this all the way up and I find a place and, you know, again, every image is going to be different, but if I find a place where this is just working and I'm like, you know, but that's just too much, I can just come over here to my opacity. And now this becomes my measurement tool of how much I'm blending into my image at the time that I'm editing the photo. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to using the photo filter uh, effect inside of on one. Now, I, when you select a different filter type, you get different controls down here. And I didn't go over all of them and I'm not going to go over all of them in this particular video. Uh, but if that's something you're interested in, then please drop it in the comment section and I'll get that video put together for you. So the next thing that I want to show you that you can do with the photo filter is you can warm it up. Now, I am using a preset, right? Everyone has access to this. If you got on one, click 85 and it's simulating uh, whatever this filter is. I don't even want to pretend like I know what it is. I just know that it's trying to mimic that. And of course, you have all these other filters that you can try out uh, if you want to cool down or make the photo look really, really weird. Uh, you can do that. And of course, if you find one and you're like, you know what, I want to save that style, then you can save that style and it'll be in your presets. Now, I have this one set on solid and what I could do is just throw in a polarizer and instantly just look at how that makes this photo look a little bit better. And if I didn't want it in the sky, I can easily just mask that out. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I think you already know that you can mask this out if you're using on one uh, overall. And then, of course, you can just do a pure polarizing effect. And that's exactly what's happening. So even though there's a color in there, this is pulled all the way down to zero. The saturation is just pushed up a little bit. And then the polarizer is pushed to 50%. And I could pull this down or I can pull it up. And if I wanted to, I could pull it up to 100% and then just blend my polarizer through the opacity. Now, the difference with this one is the polarizer uh, preset, because this is a preset inside of on one. Uh, it's here right there, so that way you can see it, is the blend mode. Now, if you go to clean shadows, it's going to give you a different look. And as you can see, it, it's not as visible of what it's doing. Uh, and then subtle is also far less visible. So you got some options to play around with. Uh, so there it is, the photo filter effect inside of On One Photo Raw. In the comment section below, let me know if this is something that you plan to start using. If it is something that you plan to start using, then come back and let me know what you used it on. If you found value in today's content, smash the like button helps this video get into the eyeballs of people who really would benefit from this. If you want to watch more quick edits, click the playlist on the left. And if you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks is right for you, Click the video on the right. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.